Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? So many of you, I did not expect this many people, so it's been exciting. Um, I figured death, November, it's cold outside. I'd be on like, oh, maybe a couple of rows, that'd be good. So, um, no, I'm actually really excited. Everyone's here. Thank you. Um, today is going to be a lot of fun. So, I know that it's going to be kind of strange and weird when you're talking about death, but it's going to be a good time. Um, so, as Megan said, I'm an illustrator and designer. Well, one of my biggest things about this is that I actually didn't call myself an illustrator for a long time. And it actually took until somebody else, Megan specifically actually, introduced me as an illustrator at one of our events for me to really be like, oh, hey, like, that's, that's what I do. Um, and so just, if you're anybody who's like, oh, I want to be a photographer and I have a camera, but I don't get paid to take pictures, like, oh, fine, put a photographer in a business card. Who cares? Like, do it. So that's that's my thing. I There's so many designers in the world and so many do different things that, like, being an illustrator is who I am, but it took, like, that moment to really, like, understand it. So don't wait for those moments. Uh, that's my little tip before we get started. Um, some about stuff that I do. Um, these are a bunch of different, like, whiteboard drawings that I do every morning when I get to work. Um, it started, I don't remember, a while ago. I actually just I ended up in the early days of just being in meetings that I didn't feel like I needed to be in, and so then I had a bunch of markers and decided that, all right, well, if you're going to force me to be in here for an hour, I'm going to at least do something out of it. And so that kind of grew into getting a little better at it, and then our company adopted the Scrum process, and so now everyone has to meet once a day or, you know, for 15 minutes or so. And I started drawing them on the board in there, and people kept requesting them, asking for new stuff. So these are some of my favorite ones. Um, once a week, I'll pick a theme. I'll do four to five, depending on how many days I get. So, um, and they're big too. I know it's hard to see. Like generally, they're like, like they're, they're pretty big, so they're fun to make. Uh, but they're all over my Instagram. So if you see them up there, you can look at it. Um, this is some of my Inktober art that I just did recently. I don't know if you guys know what that is. But the month of October, you have one ink drawing every day. If you're a creative or you have even like the smallest tiniest little creative bone in your body it's still really cool to do because they could be just totally garbage illustrations and it's still awesome to do it because it just forces you to come up with a new idea every day and really like take something like a for example the cloud like a rocket ship the word was cloud and it's like how can you make something out of that or fierce um, we had run poison I, I honestly don't remember that one is now I feel bad um, <laughs> elephant shy, right? Like there's so there's a lot of cool different ways that these things can be interpreted. It take ten minutes. Go on Facebook, go on Instagram, just go find all the different illustrations that the thousands of artists have done. It's really cool to see. What's your Instagram handle? Um, oh, my Instagram handle is Chris A Creative. It'll be on the last slide too, just in case. <laughs> All right, so obviously we're here to talk about death today, which is going to be a big roller coaster of fun times. Um, I promise. Uh, so death, to me, I think it's it's really hard to talk about death without talking about purpose and legacy. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about purpose today. Um, there's actually a ton of books and a lot of great speakers and a lot of awesome things about if you're wanting to find your purpose or you have questions about it or any of that stuff. I have about six different people I could recommend that you talk to about that. I want to focus a little bit about death and then a lot about legacy today. Um, those are really the biggest pieces that hit me when Megan and I talked about me giving a talk and I started looking through a list of what themes could I talk about, which ones. I, like, I think I could do something about death. I was like, hmm. Of all the talks I could ever give, and since I only get to give one Creative Morning Talks ever, do I really want to talk about death? Like, I don't know. So I spent about six months thinking it over, and every single month I talked to a new person, whether it was family, my wife, or just random people I didn't know, and I kept talking about the talk. Hey, that sounds really cool. Like, All right, cool, let's do it. So that's what we're here for today. Today, the biggest thing about my talk is going to be about my dad. Um, this is Francis Edward Adams. He is my absolute hero, and he's my best friend growing up. This is my favorite picture of my dad because he was actually volunteering in, I think, like a fifth grade class with my mom, um, teaching kids. That's why he's got the Mr. Frank badge on. My mom's probably somewhere else that says Mrs. Dawn on it. Um, but this says so much about who my dad was and everything in one go. Um, my dad lived his life for everybody else. Um, he wasn't a big man for himself. He was, a, he was an evangelist, so I grew up in a very Christian-based home in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and loved God with all my heart. And he taught me all these things, and it was great. But to watch him go out, and he would travel to countries and help people. He would do all these fantastic things. Our family vacations, I would actually go to St. Louis, and my dad would like, minister to people on the street. And whether you're 
religious or not, my dad's thing was he really gave people hope. And my favorite thing that my dad did is he went to prisons and would go find people who are there because they've done something wrong. And I think that no one's going to go out of the way to go to a prison. And he would minister to these people to give them hope when no one else would do that. And that, that to me was what made him such an amazing person and why it was such a big deal for me that when he did that. Our favorite moment um, together is my wife, obviously, she's back there if you want to. Um, so my dad actually married us, which was really, really important to me. Um, he, um, he actually stopped taking uh, his meds a few weeks before our wedding so that way he could come and be in full health because it was really deteriorating his health. And so we stopped doing that. It was, it was great. It was probably one of the most memorable moments of my life. Um, so that being said, the, the kind of the arc of what my dad happened is that in fall 2009, it was the first time my dad got diagnosed with cancer and liver failure. Um, he ended up getting a liver transplant in 2010, um, so that was good. Obviously, that helped him out a lot. Um, and then over the next few years, it kept deteriorating, and a lot of nasty, terrible things happened. Got a couple of different types of cancer, and it was kind of hard. And then May 31st is when he passed away. And the first thing I want to do, <laughs> so this is my dad uh, when he's in the hospital, obviously. Um, what's important about that is not just my dad, but also my mom. Um, I want everybody to turn around right now, look at that woman in the back right there. So that woman is my mom. She spent six years taking care of my best friend. And I don't know how hard it would be to watch my loved one deteriorate like that. And so I just, a big round of, we clap for my mom please. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, I know it was hard for him, but I know that she made it a lot, a lot easier. Um, so when my dad died, I think that there was a lot of things that could have happened that didn't, and I'm really thankful for. Um, I could have been angry, well, said a lot of like, what ifs, what if, what if I could have done this, what if I could have done that, asking a lot of whys. I think that, um, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, so blaming God is a pretty easy thing to go, why didn't you save my dad, right? Like, did I do enough? I could have been depressed, blame the world, and just feel lost, right? Like, these are things that happen to people when they lose someone, especially someone that's close to you. Um, but thankfully, that didn't happen to me, and I, I got to deal with a little bit of what did happen with my dad uh, when he first got diagnosed with cancer back in 2009. Um, I actually have this poem that I wrote for him that I'm not going to read to you because it's like super sad, but if you want to look at it, I totally brought it just in case. Because um, <laughs> I want to connect with you, but I don't want to make you really sad either, so if you want to look at it afterwards, we can. Um, but instead of doing those things, and instead of having that terrible moment, because I dealt with it earlier on, thankfully, um, I just took a, a real hard look back at who my dad was, what he did, what I did, what we could have done. And for a lot of our relationship, for my dad, I actually, although we were best friends, our relationship was like this. There was a lot more bad than there was good in it. I actually grew up most of my life really resenting my father and thinking that I want to do everything that he doesn't do and that he only taught me what not to do. And I was very, very angry um, for a long time with him. Um, and it didn't show up on the surface because we we're still best friends. I would call him every day after work on the way home. I would talk to him all the time, but I still had this underlying resentment. Thankfully, after he passed, that changed really uh, a lot because instead of spending my time think about what he could have done differently or what he should have done or what I could have done. It was, it was about thinking through all these fantastic moments. Um, my favorite movie, my dad, that comes to mind every time I think about my dad is that uh, we would referee soccer on the weekend, or soccer on the weekend, because we needed some money, we'd do that stuff. And I was in the middle refereeing this game, I think it was like uh, under 10 girls maybe. So they're running around the balls, going back and forth in the field. And then if you are a lineman, your job is to run along with where the ball goes. And so my dad's a little bit older, a little bit heavier, not exactly the quickest person in the world. And so I'm in the middle, running around, all of a sudden I look over because the ball goes down the field. My dad's sitting there doing this, like real hard, running real bad, and just watching him, just like run all the way down the field and do that. No one is like, he is so miserable right now. <laughs> but he would do anything to just spend more time with us and obviously to help us out, and that was a way he could do that. So that's, that's one of my favorite things. And that's, again, it just says so much about who my dad was. The biggest thing that happened when my dad passed away was that we had, again, these awesome relationships that I, I got a lot better at. We have a lot of really good memories that I'm really happy about. But I felt like there was this piece missing. Um, for me, it was I really wanted something special. 
from the, uh, I didn't think that I got that my best example. Should be here, there you go. How many of you seen Harry Potter? Yeah, good, fantastic. How many know what this scene is? Good, okay, so if you don't know, spoilers, okay, so Harry is like absolute mentor to Dumbledore, okay, he dies. Real bad. But <laughs> when he dies, in his will, he leaves Harry the golden snitch, which is the first snitch that he caught in his first Quidditch game. And that moment's really good for me to look at, because that's it's the one thing I didn't have from my dad. He spent his whole life living for others and giving his time and energy to the rest of the world. And there's just always this one piece. Like, I, I, it could have been a rock, a, a coffee cup, it could have been anything. But I didn't have that one thing my dad was like, this is for you, and this is special. And that, that's what really got me thinking. And then over the next year, I spent a lot of time thinking about who my dad was, what he did, what he, our memories, what he didn't leave me. And, and then something really awesome happened. And my baby was born. And so this is my son, Noah. Um, he's got the same middle name as my father because of my dad, which is great. Um, and again, my wife slash his mom's right back there at the Green Fountain. Um, thank you for carrying our child for nine months and being fantastic. I love you so much. Um, <laughs> so this is Noah. Um, when he was born, a big thing, so this is him now, by the way, before we jump on. Uh, this is where we're practicing our raw face for Halloween. So we, we, we scream a lot in our house, in a good way, so we're clear. <laughs> he was there, it's probably perfect. Um, so yeah, I could talk about him forever, but we're not going to do that, because I think too long. What I started to look at was, I thought about the legacy that my dad left me, what he did or didn't leave me, the memories we had, and how awesome that stuff was, and that piece of me that was wanting something. And then I started thinking about, okay, maybe it's not about what he did or didn't do, but now it's, it's about what I'm going to do for my son and why that matters so much. And a lot of this was, there was a lot of like life lessons that I felt like I should have learned um, when I was growing up, but because my home was very religious, there was a lot of times where I would like ask my mom or dad, like, hey, I don't know what to do. What should I do? Very common answer was, pray about it. Thanks, Mom. That's great. I didn't know what to do. Um, my best friend, actually, uh, Harrison Morris, I've known him since we were five. Um, recently, we were on vacation together, or we were talking in the car. He had the exact same thing. And so he's actually writing a book on purpose and like how to go find it because he is in the same thing. Where it's, I'm tired of people just being like, pray about it. See what happens. Like, oh, the real answer is here. So don't get me wrong. Pray about it. It'll help. But also, there's things that you can do. <laughs> So that was a real big part of like the legacy that I wanted to leave behind. Um, and so that's where this guy came from. Um, so this is Robbie. Um, Robbie is an adventuring robot. Along the way, he's going to like figure out what he's supposed to do, kind of like finding his purpose. Um, but right now, he doesn't know. He's just a fun little guy that drives around. Um, and this is his best friend, Carl. Um, and they're going to go on lots of adventures together. Um, it's them together. And so these are the main characters for the book that I'm writing for my son. Um, the whole point of these books is to uh, teach him these life lessons early on enough in his life that he can learn them as a kid, and so hopefully he can be a better adult. Um, and so my, my whole point of these books is to teach him those things that I got to pray about an answer for, but give him real answers for it, but then also make sure they connect in a way that it's, it's fun for parents and fun for kids. and. If I was a good person, I would have like a completed book that I could show you, but I'm not finished with it yet. So, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the book I'm writing um, and the way we're doing it. Is that a big thing for me is that I want to write a book in a way that if you're a 65 year old stoic, like real, just like grandpa, like I don't want to do that, right? If you have to sit down and you have to read a book to a three year old and you clearly don't want to read the book, like a three year old's like, oh, okay, grandpa's going to read some book. I want it to be a fun experience for you. And so I'm putting in a lot of different things in my book. They're like sound words, like zip, sing, pop, and the whoosh. That uh, if you can imagine a 65 year old going whoosh, like you're going to laugh at it. That's funny. Um, and so that's the purpose of what I really want to do is not just teach my son what he has and leave behind the legacy of things that I felt like I didn't get, but also like really make sure it's important. Um, people's time and energy, like you right now, this is very valuable to me, um, which is why I have a gift for you on your way out. But I want to make sure that if you spend a moment in my presence with my book, with my stuff, that it, it matters to you, because I want it to be important. Um, it's kind of like, what if your dad didn't die? And what if you don't have this really cool story about the book you want to write? Like, what do you do? 
because it's kind of the whole point of coming to these things, right? So, or I thought about this a lot because Megan and I actually talked like, what about today and what about tomorrow? And something that maybe could help you out in any situation that what I want you to look at is think about life, death, purpose, legacy as a whole unit. And instead of these like big, giant themes of going to happen, think of every human interaction you have as a life to death scenario. And then look back and think about what legacy did I leave behind? And what could I have done better? Or what about that situation was maybe I felt good about it and I left it right, but maybe I missed my purpose, right? And to start to break down every single human interaction you have because I think what you'll start to see and something that I started to do when I started doing this for myself is that I started to focus on the same thing every time. And so I realized, okay, that's what I need to fix. And that either can help you find your purpose, help you figure out what you want your legacy to be, your general, just make you a better person. We all want to do that, I hope. So <laughs> that's something that just think through those things, and if that can help you out, if that does anything for you, then I'm glad that you got something out of that today. Um, this is my favorite quote. It has a lot to do with that saying of, uh, there's a better way to do it. Uh, find it. And that applies to everything, uh, whether it's your daily work, whether it's your conversations, whether it's just someone's walking out the door, you want to take two seconds to hold the door for them, because why not? Um, just if there's anything I want to challenge you with is to be better in, in small ways. Here's my inspiration. Um, these are all people that uh, have inspired me in one way or another that really got me to want to do these things. Um, James White is my favorite graphic designer, illustrator. He's got some really cool posters. Uh, Simon Sinek is like the world's best speaker, seriously. Um, he's the guy if you want to know about like purpose and things, that's, that's a good one. Um, yeah, yeah, start with Wise's book, it's fantastic. Um, Brian Kessinger is actually a Disney illustrator. Phenomenal, this guy's great. Um, so if you draw it all, go find that guy. Um, and so that's kind of the end of it for me. So thank you guys. <laughs>